Obviously a uh, first time back out on the ice with the team. How are you feeling and kind of what what happened that took you out of play right now? Uh, yeah, it was felt it felt good. Um, obviously you haven't been on the ice for a couple days. Um, and uh, I I liked my practice. I felt pretty good. I'm gonna have to see how everything feels uh, tomorrow morning um, and then go about it like that. But uh, uh, I was I was pleased and happy with how things went, and I thought I was skating well, and it was good. And just how important is that first skate, knowing just to sort think, of gauge? Yeah, I think it's it's really big. Uh, I kind of was out there before practice started just to kind of test it and see how everything is going and uh, how the body's reacting, and uh, I was pleased. So then uh, I kind of went right into the practice and um, got through it pretty well. So I was... Uh, I was happy with that, and I thought um, my condition was... I, it hasn't been too many days, so I think that's been good, but uh, yeah, I was happy with it. I'll just kind of reevaluate tomorrow morning, right? So that's uh, that'll be uh, the next test. How much... You know, we were just listening to Lindy on the ice. What we could hear is that, you know, communication was either lacking and really needed to be a big focus. You're a big communicator, even when you're not on the ice. How valuable is really hammering that? Well, I, I think there's um, there's an area that you don't want to be too quiet, and then you don't want to be too too um, goofy or clowny or whatever you want to call it. But there's like a happy medium there, and uh, sometimes silence is death. So you need to have uh, talk. I mean, on, especially on the ice, you, you need guys talking for the puck. That means that they want it too. Um, and I don't think we've been having as much of that as of late. And uh, it just puts everybody on the same page. And uh, it really helps you break out. That's probably your number one area. Um, you see a lot of people call for the puck when they're in scoring positions, but we need to call for the puck more in the D zone and, and break out faster, and that's how you get your offense out of that. So um, that's something that we, we addressed, and uh, it was an area on the ice that we were trying to be a little bit louder, and I thought maybe you guys noticed, but uh, I think a lot of the best teams, they, they, they're loud and they communicate, and guys are on the same page, so that's something that we have to keep growing. and. Um, we don't want to be stagnant because everybody's getting better at this time. And I, I've always told you about how the level of competition keeps growing and uh, we have to keep getting better as a team. So was this mainly, it was like linking your communication, linking the defense to the forwards, basic, basically on the breakouts and well, things like that? Both, you're right, absolutely. I think um, because of how the game works, there's a lot of times where the first two guys back is a forward and a D and they have to communicate with each other. And uh, I even think personally that our D, we can communicate better uh, as our D partners. And, uh, you need to do that because you don't want to be hemmed in your own zone. The faster you can get out, the more you're playing in the O zone, right? So there's the both both ways. Um, the other thing is, I always think is that uh, when when you're you're communicating, you're at you want the puck, uh, you're engaged. Uh, it, it just shows that you you you're you're, you're prepared, you're ready, and it's kind of goes hand in hand with our first periods. So if you if you do all this stuff, it kind of it kind of works. And uh, I think we just have to be more engaged, more prepared. Um, we got to want the puck, and then if you do that, you're calling for it. So uh, um, it's kind of the things that we've been talking about. Are you noticing now, like second or third times around playing a lot of these teams, that they're approaching you guys differently, even schematically, and things that they're trying they're trying to do? Yeah, for sure. I see. I think the biggest thing is the neutral zone. They try to clog up the neutral zone. They they make sure that we aren't getting those odd man rushes, which at the start of the season was where we were very effective and teams are trying to slow us down. Obviously, you start learning about teams and their tendencies and what they do well and ours is our speed and there's no question about it. So uh, our speed and our talent and so you, you start seeing teams clog it up and maybe going like a 1-2-2 a one, two, two or 1-3-1 one, one or whatever it is um, and we just have to do a better job of managing the puck in the neutral zone and once we do that, I think we become effective. I mean, you're... Your best offense is your best defense. So if we're getting, still getting pucks behind them because they're doing a good job, then you're going to be in the O zone. You're going to be scored on. So it's 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 definitely an area um, that we got to keep harping on. And you see in the playoffs, even the most skilled teams, you got to find a way to get those gritty goals. I mean, I, I was a big fan of watching Tampa because they have the skill to go odd man rushes, but then they also found a way to get the pucks in and grind it in, right? And that's what you got to do to be the last man standing. Um, last one for me is, um, you know, it's probably a bigger thing for younger guys, but I know sometimes folks talk about you get a game or two up in the press box uh, and everyone wants to be in every game, but it kind of gives you a new perspective again. Do you feel like sitting up there for a game or two kind of give you a yeah. reset you a bit? Or? Yeah, it's, it's kind of that double-edged sword, I guess. You can look at it. It's You don't want to be up there, uh, but you, you do get to see things in a different perspective and uh, take some things away from that. I think that was the biggest thing that I learned early in my career 
is that try to focus on the game and, and look at where areas that you can improve your own game and improve the team too, right? And what is working and what's not working. And uh, those are things that I think uh, is valuable when you are sitting up in the press box. Nobody wants to be sitting there, but um, try to take some positives out of it. And I was definitely trying to do that. I've done that and I think uh, in my career, and I think it's, it's just beneficial. Like you're always trying to get better at whatever. I know I'm older in the game, but I'm still trying to grow as, as, as a player. And even on, as my role on this team, um, so, um, I mean, if it's, it's, like I said, it's kind of, you don't want to be there, but if you are, try to find the, the, the optimism in it, I guess, in that sense. Does it really felt like one of the biggest emphasis is, was communication. Is that right? And how do you kind of see that maybe has been slipping from everybody's game? Uh, yeah, I mean, that was, uh, the focus today, you know, just, uh, communication, uh, Talk to your partner. Uh, you know, let them know you're there. Let them know you're you're open. Uh, I think that was kind of missing the last couple of games, and uh, you know, we were working on that today. And I think, you know, it's a huge part in the game. It's uh, it makes it so much easier if you if you know where your teammates are. And uh, yeah, that was the main focus today. And I, I was just going to add that it's not just about defensive partners, but it's allowing you guys to work better as a five-man unit. Correct? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, if everybody talks. Uh, you know we're connected. Even uh, if the goalie, if he can uh, talk to us as well, I mean that's uh, that's huge, you know. And uh, yeah, as I say, it just it just makes everything uh, a little easier. Do you think that that was maybe lacking in the game in Minnesota, or where have you sort of seen that maybe slip off a little bit? Yeah, I mean uh, it was lacking in Minnesota. I think it was lacking the past couple games as well. Uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's not easy. Uh, you you got to make a decision or call a, a play in, in a split second. Uh, it's not always easy, but I think if you if you have enough time, uh, you see the play. I mean, if you, if you talk to your partner, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's so much easier and uh, it helps everyone out, you know. Talking about communication, obviously good to see Smitty back out there. I know he's a big communicator with the whole bench all the time. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he's uh, he's one that uh, likes to talk. Uh, um, yeah, he's uh, you know, he's, he's there's always good vibes with him uh, everywhere he is, and uh, you know, I think we were missing that a little bit as well the last couple of games. But uh, you know, he's he's been uh, back for a couple of days now, and uh, first time in our practice, and uh, yeah, I'm glad he's back. Do you ever worry or think about a team? like Columbus, where they are in the standings, almost as a trap game in a way? Uh, yeah, I mean, for sure, we can't underestimate them. You know, uh, they're a good team as well, which I think every, every team in this league is pretty good. Uh, yeah, we just got to, you know, uh, like our goal is to, you know, start from, from first minute just to play our game, uh, play with a high tempo, uh, fast hockey and... Uh, you know, have a good floor check and, uh, you know, not sit back and just wait. Uh, I think we got to, you know, make the first step and uh, show them, like, we're, we came here to play. For you, what was the most disappointing part about that Minnesota game that's almost mistakes that you guys made on yourselves? Yeah, I think, you know, we, I think the first period wasn't that great. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It was just, everything was kind of missing. Uh, it was like, we were pretty slow. Uh, I think we just got to work on that, you know, uh, come out of the gate uh, with uh, a lot of energy and uh, high tempo, but still, you know, be smart, uh, play smart hockey. And uh, yeah, I think if we do that, uh, you know, like uh, it scares the other team as well. Andy, it felt today, uh, listening to everyone on the ice, that communication was a key part of the focus today. Have you seen that slip? And can you explain why practicing that particular skill is so important? Well, quicker outs, knowing where your outs are. Uh, there's a lot of pressure in the game when you're under pressure. If you you know you hear a teammate, teammate's voice, uh, it can be a lot easier exit. Uh, you know, and I think there's sometimes we're we're lacking when uh, it comes to communicating. Um, sometimes it's good, but I think we can get better as a team. I think you kind of mentioned it there, but knowing that when you're playing a game, everything is a split decision, is that why it's also so important to practice it like that? Yeah, well, I think that uh, the more situational practice uh, drills we can put in, uh, the better. If you can uh, make the drills like game situations, uh, where you're under pressure, um, where you need to communicate, where 
where your outs are going to be. Uh, it should help you for a game. To see Jack out there, obviously, just after the formal part of practice, I imagine a, a good sign in his progress. Yeah, it, it's a great sign. Uh, obviously, we wanted to come out and uh, try it. Uh, first step in getting back to play. and. By all indications, uh, things went well. And with Brendan Smith talking to him before, he said he just wants to sort of see how he's feeling tomorrow after a first skate. Yeah, I mean, first day back, you know, after missing uh, four or five days. So, uh, again, good to get him back out there. And uh, uh, from all indications are, he felt well too. And you're going back to the communication focus, is that mostly like linking your defensemen with your forwards when you're trying to break out of the zone there, that kind of communication? You know, I think it's both. Uh, you know, it's a deep partner going back. if. If he has help or support uh, from his partner, it could be him. It could be a forward coming back and, and supporting. Uh, so in all cases, it could, it could be either or. Uh, Bunky had an assist back in the lineup and was involved in some other plays as well. Did you feel like you got what you wanted from, from him there? Yeah, I thought he had three really good looks in the game. Uh, you know, had a, he had a shot where he um, ended up missing the net. He had an early save. Uh, we made a glove save in one of his opportunities. I thought he skated well. A couple of puck plays I'd like to see him clean up, but I thought his, uh, his speed was real evident inside the game. You were playing a team like uh, Columbus, who the first time you played him, you obviously had one of your best games of the season. Do you worry at all about having to grab guys' focus for, for a game like this? No. Uh, I, I think our team understands that uh, every grand game is in, incredibly tough. And this year, you, just, you can take a look at uh, this time of schedule. Uh, the number of games you can predict or you think you're going to predict and all of a sudden the opposition is the, the team that wins it. And uh, There's not a game you can take for granted. These guys won their previous game. Uh, they beat a good team. Uh, they're, playing, they're playing good hockey right now. Uh, you know, we have to play good hockey.